Can you tell the public, have you found more information that was classified that's in this tranche of we, documents? We have upgraded uh, some uh, uh, a number of these. Uh, these and what's emails. your estimate of how many? Until we release it, we don't have a firm number. Uh, I, I think it's somewhere around 150. Are you saying that those 150 are being considered classified after the fact, or did yes. any of them? Okay, so zero were considered classified at the time? That's correct. Can you say from that podium categorically that Secretary Clinton followed the rules and the law? I'm just not going to answer that question. It's not our goal. It's not our function in this regard in releasing these emails. Well, the State Department getting ready to release thousands more emails. And as you heard there, 150 of them will have redactions because they're said to be classified. Now, the State Department and the Clinton campaign says they were not classified at the beginning, but only classified after. Other intelligence agencies say there were many of these emails, and we don't know how many yet, that were classified at origination, at the origin, when they were sent. Uh, with that, let's bring in our panel. Steve Hayes, senior writer for the Weekly Standard. Mara Lyason, national political correspondent of National Public Radio and syndicated columnist Charles Krathammer. Mara. Well, this is a story that's not going away. And the State Department, because this is the way it operates, continues to, to put out a dump of these every so often. There's 7,000 7, pages tonight at 9 o'clock. And um, it's a problem for her, and I think it's part of, it's not the whole reason, but it is part of the reason why she's slipping in the polls. Speaking of polls, uh, the latest poll out by uh, the Bloomberg uh, Des Moines Register poll has uh, Bernie Sanders closing in on Hillary Clinton, uh, just seven points back. If you look at the margin of error, it's essentially tied there. This is Iowa. We remember, uh, Steve, that uh, Sanders is leading in at least two polls, I think maybe even three polls now in New Hampshire. Right. Uh, so this is having an effect. It's definitely having an effect. I think the significance of the Iowa polls, it shows that Bernie Sanders, as we've been able to tell from anecdotal evidence, I mean, looking at the, the size of the rallies, he's not a regional candidate. He's not leading in New Hampshire simply because he is from next door in Vermont. He's leading because Hillary Clinton is slipping. And it must be said, because people in Iowa like him. I mean, that was one of the interesting findings. This was not just an anti-Hillary vote. It was a pro-Bernie Sanders vote. But going back to the emails, I, mean, I, th I think if you listen carefully to the defense that you're hearing from Hillary Clinton supporters, it's really no defense at all. What we now know is that 150 more of these um, emails contain sensitive national security information. That's indisputable. It's no defense to say that it they weren't marked classified because they're saying now this stuff is still so sensitive that we can't make it public now. Well, surely it was more sensitive when she was serving as Secretary of State and when the information presumably was much more contemporaneous. That's a huge problem for her. There is no good explanation for it, and I, I continue to think that's why we're not hearing an explanation from her. Charles? The irony is that this is, again, self-inflicted. Even if she, were if she had been prepared to release her emails, she's been out of office for over two years. Now she's being hammered because it's once a month. So this is a story that is really sort of uh, hurting her campaign continually. Whereas what you would want to do, any candidate would want to dump it all at the beginning, overwhelm people with it in one, you know, a Friday night at midnight, uh, exposure of all this, and then have it end for at least a while. But here she's going to have it all into next year. The other thing about this is when you look at the numbers uh, for Bernie Sanders and all of the, the talk about Biden, he's got a, a sort of low double digits. But the interesting part about that is they are split between Hillary um, and Sanders. So if, he, if he's not in the race, each of them gets about the same half of the Biden vote, which means we all assume that if he gets in, Sanders somehow will disappear. He's going to inherit all of the Sanders support, and he'll be a one-on-one. -on -one. Not necessarily. He could split the, the anti-Hillary vote and actually help her if he got in. Let's listen to uh, Bernie Sanders today being asked about this whole email back and forth. And to what do you attribute this narrowing of the gap? Is this related to the well, email controversy and the trust factor? I, I don't think so, Andrea. <clears throat> and this is not just Iowa. <clears throat> this is New Hampshire. Uh, this is all across the country. But this campaign that I am running, let me reiterate, is not against Hillary Clinton or anybody else. I have known Hillary Clinton for 25 years, and I know her to be a very hardworking, intelligent person, somebody I work with within the Senate. So I am sorry, I am not going to get into the media game, Andrea, of attacking, making personal attacks against Hillary Clinton. 
Mara, I mean, he says he's not going to get into the media game, but at some point, this is going to push comes well, to shove. This is here. what's really interesting about Bernie Sanders. He will tell you a lot of ways that he differs from Hillary Clinton. I voted against the Iraq War. She did. I want to expand um, Social Security. She doesn't. Bum, bum, bum. But he has tried, and he's broadcast a strategy here, to not make any personal attacks, attacks about the emails, about her honesty and trustworthiness. The question is, as this guy gets closer and closer to her, any politician will be sorely tempted uh, to do what politicians do, which is go after your opponent. And it's, I'm wondering when he starts doing that. Yeah, he's showing remarkable restraint, I'd yeah. say, given the fact, given the news cycles over the past several months. Although months. he doesn't have to do much, it's doing itself. It's yeah. doing yeah. itself, and maybe that's his strategy. Why should I step in and pile on when yeah, it's, it's taking care good. of itself? Yeah. Having said that, I don't agree that it's just a personal attack. And I don't think that, that this is something that he can, can label as a media game. I think it's highly relevant whether he thinks it was appropriate that she set up a, a separate server, circumvented the, the record retention requirements of the U.S. government, and if that's an appropriate way to conduct yourself if you're Secretary of State. There's no doubt he'll get asked that question in the Democratic debate. I think you ought to have a good answer for it. There's, there's different sides to this email situation. There's the classified question, Charles. Now we, we see this interaction between the Clinton Global Initiative and her time as Secretary of State. We covered it uh, in that book, Clinton Cash. Uma Abedin had many different hats she wore as an assistant and aide to Secretary Clinton. But now this interaction of, of something that Bill Clinton wants, a company that actually does business with Iran, uh, we could see some of this in the email. I think that could be the biggest threat. We all know that there was stuff that was classified, her defenses, I didn't know, etc. But here is the, 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 the Clinton Foundation has a slush fund to support the lifestyle of the Clintons uh, and getting a lot of money from unsavory people, including this is a company in Malaysia that was selling oil to Iran while she is Secretary of State in charge of sanctions. The very question is an outrage. Should we have him as a member, a paying member of the Clinton Global Initiative? The answer obviously is no. You don't go and ask about it, but he tells you they were ready to take money from everybody. And that, I think, is going to be in the emails from here until next year. And when those are revealed, I think it's really going to hurt her as much as the classified stuff. But quickly, Mara, this is not what the FBI is looking into. That interaction between Clinton Global Initiative and Secretary of State is not what they're no. looking at, but media looking no, into these emails. Also, what it does at. is it, it, it underlines the concern that she, do, she doesn't seem like she has to play by the same rules, that they're just held to a different standard. That's what's hurting her. I don't know if voters care if their politicians are honest and trustworthy, but I think they do care that they don't think that they're above the law or play by different rules. I don't know. Some of these polls, authentic. Yeah, I sure think yes. they care. Authentic I think people, is a problem. I, th I also think people want to see what's in this this information that's been retroactively uh, withheld, censored from the American public. I mean, is it just that it was sensitive national security information, or is there embarrassing stuff about the foundation in there? I mean, that's an open question. We don't have any way of knowing that. Next up, some big movement in the Republican polls for one particular candidate.